So there was something that was sent to me. It was a video from a prominent Hebrew Roots ministry. They talked about the festivals for believers, which actually that portion of it was very good. I feel like that's kind of how they reel you in, right? They talk about some good stuff, and then they throw some really wacky stuff. And once again, remember the comment that we made, uh, do you have receipts on that? There were no receipts given for this one. Uh, Not one receipt that I saw. Anyway, here was the claim. Here was the claim. And if you know who we're talking about, that's great. But if you don't, that's fine too. Here was the claim. The claim was that... The Torah used to number the months as one, two, three, four, and that uh, the names of the month, Tammuz, Nisan, they don't come around until uh, the Judah is in exile in Babylon. Okay, so there may be some uh, some truth to the notion that the uh, month, month names come from pagan deities. This is this is fine. In fact, we have this today in our in our modern uh, calendar: January, February, March, April, May, June. So some of these are based on uh, things that we as believers would reject. But those are the names of the month. So the idea, first of all, let me give you the claim first. Here's the claim: the claim is is that uh, Yom Teruah is the biblical day of of blowing trumpets. There's not a lot given to this. And so what happens is after Judah's in Babylon, they come back, they come back to uh, to Israel, and now they're bringing all this paganism with them. And part of this paganism is is a new year, the new year of Tammuz. And this new year is actually a cel- a pagan celebration of a new year to this pagan deity, Tammuz. And so really... What has happened is that the Jewish people, what they're celebrating is not actually Yom Yom Teruah. It's actually Rosh Hashanah, which is actually a pagan festival. And believers shouldn't fall to this this pagan festival of Rosh Hashanah. There is a whole lot of, uh, there's a whole lot of uh, suggestion with, once again, no receipts. And so... To me, the point is, first of all, if you're listening to a uh, teaching and something sounds amazing and possibly too good to be true, it probably is. Um, or if it has that, uh, what is what is the sauce that they put on it that it's like, and then special this, sauce? And then the, yeah, the special sauce, the mystery sauce. The mystery sauce. You know, uh, you know yeah. how like you're watching a video and it's like they've got the right music and the, and they're good at the video. And then the guy talks like this and like this and then this. It's the I call it like the mystery sauce. I don't know. What do you call it? Uh, but it's if it's got if it's like secret this sauce. Has too much. Yeah, this has way too much secret sauce. So you you have to have like an acquired taste of like, yeah, there's too much barbecue sauce on this this hamburger or whatever you know there's too much here and and if if you get that there's too much sauce if you start feeling saucy like this is like you know (laughs) i'm not sure what that means but if you just if it's dripping with sauce let that be like a gut check like hang on just a second they're probably they're probably uh they're probably adding too much of the of the the mystery sauce here. Basically, when it comes to these kind of videos, I mean, I don't want to give anything away, but if people tell you to go test stuff, go test it, like legitimately. Don't take their word for it because this kind of stuff is absolutely ridiculous. Well, ultimately, what I'll give you my thoughts on this, Rob, and then you can you can tell me what you think. That ultimately, what you're doing, they say that these these month names were later insertions into the text. First of all, there's no evidence for that whatsoever. There's no evidence textually that the uh, that the names of the months. Like a later, you mean like a later copyist yeah, said, "Oh, that, I'm going I'm I'm, to I'm gonna add these these month names in." There's there's no evidence of that whatsoever. Um, well, it, especially it can't be because, for example, like I just pulled up in Nehemiah two one, it says it came about in the month of Nisan in the twentieth year of King uh, Artaxerxes. In other words. They would have to erase. They would have have to erase the first month from the text and replace it with with a new one. You know what I mean? Right. Or like Nehemiah one. It happened in the month of Kislev in the twentieth year. Like they would have to erase the month number and then put the Babylon. And yeah, and that just doesn't make any sense. Well, um, yeah. So I mean, ultimately, you're you're talking about now degrading the canonicity of the scriptures, and um, 
but this idea that Rosh Hashanah, I'm sorry, this is nonsense. The fact is, is that, uh, is that the the idea of uh, Yom Teruah being a new year is in the text. How is it in the text? Well, it's in the text because this is if it's a jubilee year, this is when everybody gets freed. So if I'm a slave and I've worked 12 years yep. to a master, what new year am I looking for? Am I looking yep. for Passover? No, nothing happens at Passover except for a celebration. I am looking forward to Yom Teruah when I get uh, when I get to be let free. To me, that's a new year. Something is definitely new about that. That's right. So I mean, yes, the years, especially for the for the uh, holiday, the festival cycle starts in Nissan, but the agricultural. Uh, and concerning the land, the new year for that is actually in the seventh month. Right. And that's in, Le- that's in the Torah, Leviticus 25, nine, you shall sound a ram's horn abroad on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement. You shall sound a horn throughout all your land. You shall thus consecrate the 50th year and proclaim release. Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications. And we'll see you in the next video.